previously on Third and Roll. He has a wedge in front of him. He breaks out to the left-hand side of the field. He is running at the 40, at the 30, at the 20, at the 10, and it's at the freaking touchdown to start off the Labor Day Classic. Hamilton returns the ball all the way down the field. That looks as though it is a 95-yard touchdown. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, Argos. Doing great. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good strategy because you know me, I have weak knees. It is an age of Canadian football domination. In the West, the Edmonton Eskimos are a dynasty without equal. Behind the quarterback tandem of Tom Wilkinson and Warren Moon, the Eskimos won five consecutive Grey Cup championships between 1978 and 1982. In the East, four teams battle it out through a six-game season to see who will meet Edmonton in the championship game. The Toronto Argonauts have not hoisted a Grey Cup since 1952. Will this be their year? Let's find out. This is Third and Roll. Welcome to Third and Roll, the Canadian Football Board Game Podcast. This is the podcast where we play the 1985 board game Canadian Armchair Football. My name is Spencer. I'm here with my brother Alex. Hello. Also in the booth today, we have Dwayne. This is the conclusion of the 1980 Labor Day Classic. The Argos are on the road at Iverwind Stadium facing the Hamilton Tiger Cats. This is a battle for first place in the East. We will see who will come out on top as we complete this great Labor Day Classic. Let's throw it now up to the booth where we've got Edward Welch doing the play-by-play, Norman Knuckleberger doing the commentary, and Dave Marler offering a player's insights. Guys, take it away. And what can we say about this game? I mean, Hamilton really uh, threw, threw a surprise there on their last drive by uh, implementing a new run strategy. Really caught the Argos' defense off guard. Okay, so we are back. I just want to bring you guys up to speed regarding some of the stats. So for the Argos, we have Terry Metcalf going over 100 yards. It is 140 yards. Hamilton in the second half leaning heavily on the run. So it was 50-50 at halftime. Four runs, four passes. At this point, it is now... 13 runs versus six passes, so 54 yards on the ground, 77 yards through the air, but Toronto has those three turnovers, so two interceptions and one turnover on downs, so Hamilton is still very much in it. Let's bring it back down to Dave Marler. Okay, guys, we've had a lot of success. This is my whispering voice, by the way. We've had a lot of success on the runs, so we're going to keep doing that. We're going to do our uh, patented sweep play. That gave us so much jump on that last drive. Okay, so Marler hands it up to Crawford. Crawford doing a sweep, trying to get out. Oh, awesome! Oh, Crawford, no! And <laughs> no! Bruce Clark stops him for a two yard loss. Wow. 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 That was a real hit there that Bruce Clark dropped onto Crawford, and he was staring daggers at Dave Marler the entire time. He looks like he's got a real bee in his bonnet regarding something. He is out there for blood. Was that what he said? Okay, we're, we're, we're getting uh, confirmation from our lip reader and analysis. He was saying, you next time, was what he was saying when he was staring at Marler. He said, you next time. These guys want to read lips and they want to say see something. You know, you know, that's their problem. I think they're very sensitive. Let's see. We have not had a sack so far in this game. It is possible. Marler could have been sacked earlier in the game when he was trapped, but he was able to escape and hit that uh, 20-yard pass out to Clarkson. But uh, it is going to be... Second down. And 12 for Hamilton. So Hamilton has to get a first down on this play, or they can either kick... Or they could go for it on third down. Okay, guys, just so we're all clear, it's second down right now. So it's time for a patented Dave Marler long pass. Marler back. Marler is looking for Clarkson. Clarkson over the middle. And... Wow, Preston Young with the interception. 
Preston Young, he has been spying the eye of the quarterback all throughout that play. Let's see what he's able to do with it on the return. And the answer to that is very little. So Preston Young picks up five. So it's a net of 10 on the play, a 15-yard pass that was intercepted and a five-yard return. Well, look where we are once again, right on the midfield line. Oh, Norman, you love you love standing on that center line. And you know what? I mean, you've corrected me on this before. It is not the 55-yard line. It is the center line. It is the center line. Love to see that see that. Just to know we're in territory here that it's just like this extra space. It's like this magical extra world in the middle of the field where it's like the field's got stretched out. Field got stretched out, and then there's this extra weird twilight zone in the middle right on the can't line. believe that toronto's back to the 55 yard line what's that coach it's called the center line i don't think that's true i think it's the 50 oh okay well you know coach you know there are rules pedants out there that say the c stands for center but in my heart that c stands for canada this is jamal campbell number 67 offensive tackle from the toronto argonauts you're listening to third and roll a Canadian football board game podcast. The Argos with the ball. They are in an option formation. Jackson, is he going to pass? No. He decides to hand it off to Metcalf, and Metcalf picks up five. So it's a gain of five. The Argos are down to the Hamilton 50-yard line. So this is what would be the center line if we were playing that other kind of gridiron. Argos going back to the running game. And, oh, goodness. I wish I had another Skull and Bones reference to throw out here. Dave, if you happen to know what is the name of that uh, Native American whose remains they urinate on as, as a initiation ceremony in Skull and Bones? I believe that was Geronimo. Geronimo. Oh, Geronimo. He knocks him back for a six-yard loss. Wow. Wow. I have not seen a rush that disappointing since the rush to the stalls after a Skull and Bones initiation ceremony. I'm not sure that makes any sense. But uh, so it is now going to be third and 11 for the Argos from... Oh back on their own side of the field from the Argos 54 yard line. Coach is thinking about it. Zenon and Rishishin is back and that kick is up and it is a 40 yard kick. It looks as though the ball was sailing out of bounds but uh, Dave Shaw grabbed it, picked up five yards. There's a flag on the play. The officials are conferring. And yes, that is a flag on the returning team. A clipping penalty of 15 yards, which pushes them back. So that is a net of 50 yards on the kick. 40 through the air, and then 10 on the penalty. Are we now in a uh, halfway to the goal situation? We are now on the 21-yard line with a 15-yard penalty. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's within the 25 or the 20. But uh, I think it's 25. I believe because this penalty of a penalty of 15 yards would be greater than half the distance. Be, yeah, so 15, that half the distance from 21 would be 10 and a half. So we say 11, a 10 yard penalty. If we round down from 10 and a half to 10. Okay. If the penalty is more than half the distance to the goal line, then there's only half. So you're at 21, and so that's more than half. And that, that rule always applies then. Well, the rules pedant is very happy with that as a very graceful and logical and good rule. So yeah, so is it the 21? So that would be uh, 10 and a half, the 10 and a half yard line. I believe elegant is the word, yes, to have for this to apply all over the field. But yes, I, and I'm happy to have that be placed on the 11. If we round to the 11, I am agreeable. Let's do that, because that'll be a real mess to uh, keep track of that half yard <laughs> all the way down the field. <laughs> All right, so it's first and 10 Hamilton from the their own 11-yard line. Four minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. 
This is Chad Owens, the Flying Hawaiian and former receiver for the Toronto Argonauts. You're listening to Third and Roll, a Canadian football board game podcast. Okay, we're going to run a reverse. Crawford. And he picks up 10 yards. First down. Hamilton having a lot of success running the ball. First and 10 from their own 21 yard lines. You know, I'm not seeing the adjustments I want to see from the Argos as a run defense here. Absolutely. They, uh, there's got to be some X's and O's in terms of what they can do here. But uh, Marler hands it to Crawford from the option, and it is a seven yard pickup. So it is second and three Hamilton from their 28 yard line. Hamilton with the ball, hands it off to Crawford, and Crawford picks up two. Third and one from their own 30-yard line. Norman. Big call here. This is the three-minute warning. It's going to be the three-minute warning. We will be right back after this. Greetings from the desk of Dr. Footius Balunicus. In the 12th century Georgian epic poem, The Knight in the Panther's Skin, a proud youth boasts of his skill in archery and football. To this, the king laughs, saying, Let us lay a wager. Let your armies attend as witnesses. Who is like me in the lists, said you? Vain indeed is denial. That is decided by the ball and the field. I will not let thee thus dispute with me. Say the word, do not shirk. Let us make good men witnesses of our rivalry. Then in the field it will be manifest whose praises should be sung. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to Iverwind Stadium. Hamilton with the ball with an opportunity to steal a victory here from the Jaws of Defeat. Still plenty of time left. The clock will be stopping after every single play. It is a third and one from their own 30-yard line. Marler under center. Let's listen in. Okay, guys. I'm just going to sneak the ball. I got a good feeling about this. Marler calls his own number. Wow, a gap opens up right on, in the B gap there. He sneaks through it, gets past Clark, gets past Southwick, and Preston Young has to bring him down. That was a 10-yard pickup on a quarterback sneak. What a run. What a timely roll. I mean, a timely performance there by the quarterback out of Mississippi State. Oh, he really played that role uh, brilliantly. So it'll be first and 10, Hamilton from the 40-yard line. Hamilton with the ball. Marler dumps it off to Crawford. Crawford gets dropped for a loss of five on the screen pass. Let's see if Crawford is able to do anything with the ball. And Crawford picks up six. So it looks as though it's going to be a loss of five on net. It's actually a gain of one. Crawford was able to escape there in the backfield from Bruce Clark and pick up six yards. So it's going to be a second and nine for the Tiger Cats. Tiger Cats going back to the running game. Crawford breaks through the right-hand sideline. He picks up 10 yards. First down. They are at their own 51-yard line. Two minutes remaining in the game. Okay, we're going to run a pass from option. Marler with the ball. He is looking for Clarkson. Clarkson looking for an opportunity to redeem himself over the middle. And... Clarkson, oh! no! Preston Young. Is that his third interception of the game? Yes, I... Working. No, it is, it is plenty. Preston Young with the interception. Wow, what a turn of events. 
Hamilton, starting deep in their own drive, was able to move the ball up to midfield. Marler looking to push it downfield. And Preston Young comes underneath and picks up the reception. And with the ball, he is able to pick up an additional five yards. So five yards there on the interception return. And that brings us down where there is a minute and 40 seconds remaining in this game. Marler, thoughts? That is not good. It's not working, Jerry. It's just not working. Why did it all turn out like this for me? I had so much promise. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more, but you know what? You're going for it. Gotta respect that. You're listening to Third and Roll. Can I say the same thing, but in Tamil? You know, Kurt Kondi put the Third and Roll. So Argos, from their own 44-yard line, Jackson hands it off to Metcalf. Metcalf breaks past the line of the scrimmage. He is past the linebacker into the secondary. What a run. That was a 45-yard pickup for Metcalf. He is closing in, if not having reached 200 yards rushing on the game. Norman, what is Toronto doing in their blocking? Or what is Hamilton doing with their with their defense that is leading to these kinds of rushes for, for Metcalf? Well, you know, it's always about the run gap. It's, about the, it's, about the, it's always about the gap blocking. You know, when the fullback co- comes to uh, block the defensive end, you, know, you cross the fullback's face, forcing the ball carry to the outside. Then the inside line linebacker scrapes wide. It becomes very difficult to get a block on him. But, you know, the key to this play, you know, is like uh, really let the fullbacks take the same course at the end, not go upfield and tip the play. His block may be the most important block in that play. You know, often the block won't be necessary because the end using a bounce technique will, will take himself out of the play. But really the pulling guard should take his run course until he reaches the play side B gap. Once he has uh, depth, he can clear the fullback's block. He goes outside, looks for the strong safety. If strong safety isn't coming, guard looks back to the inside. He's a linebacker, nothing there, but guard doesn't go downfield unless he gets a go call from the QB. And, you know, that's how you coordinate uh, a, a run play. Well, it sounds so simple when, when you explain it like that, Norman. And it's been an amazing game for Metcalf. 24 rushes for 196 yards. The Argos, if they are able to get a field goal on this possession, they could put this into a two-possession game, and they are going right back to Metcalf, and Metcalf picks up 10 yards. First down, Toronto. So that puts him over 200 yards rushing on the game. He has had two 45-yard rushes here in the second half of the game. Time is really becoming an enemy here for the Tiger Cats. There is a minute and 15 seconds remaining in the game. So Argo's going right back to Metcalf, and Metcalf picks up six yards. So six yards, going to be second and four for Metcalf, a minute and ten remaining in the game. Okay, Jackson back under center. As he's done all afternoon, he's handing the ball off to Metcalf. Metcalf with the ball. Metcalf picks up ten yards, so that's another first down for the Argos. <coughs> It's a very special kind of first down. It's a touchdown! Metcalf with the ball, busted up right through the center, and it is a touchdown for the Argos. Wow. Touchdown! I could have sworn the fields were uh, 120 yards long, but I was mistaken, they're only 110. <laughs> well, don't get me started on this because you know that I want that field to be longer and bigger, and I think it should be 200 yards. I think it should be 1,760 yards, and then it'll be a nice even mile. My apologies, folks. I was looking down at my notes. I was not looking at the field in front of me. That is Metcalf bringing it in for yet another touchdown on the game. Zenon and Rishishin. On to see for the extra point. The extra point is good. I kick. And so with that, it is 21 to 8 for the Argos. There is just 45 seconds remaining in this game. Xenon with the kickoff to Hamilton. You know, these punters really have to work fast uh, in the Canadian Football League. You know, they go off and they kick the extra point and then they have to come and do the kickoff. 
So Hamilton does get a good kick return. So the Argos kick down to the five. And they're able to pick up 30. So there are 40 seconds remaining in, in the game here. Hamilton down by two scores, 21 to eight. Marler, is he going to go, is he going to try to pat his personal stats here? Is he going to try to push the ball down the field? It's going to uh, kneel right down here on my bad knee. Uh, is that an option? Can I do that? No. I got, I got bad stats? All right. No, you, you, you can do many different things, but there, there's no kneeling in this game. Well, it looks like the uh, quarterback is, is thinking of just tossing in the towel here. Long pass time. Okay, Marler with the ball. Clarkson looking deep. And that ball is incomplete. Just beyond the outstretched fingertips of Clarkson. So it's back to a second and ten now for the Tiger Cats. All right, run a sweep. Tiger Cats running a sweep. It's worked very well for them so far. And they pick up six. So with 15 seconds remaining in the game, it is a third and four for the Tiger Cats, down 21 to eight. All right, guys, we got pretty good field position here. So let's just, uh, let's punt the ball. The, the long pass? That's a punt. <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought you said pump the ball. Okay. So... I'm, not, I'm not quite believing what I'm seeing. I believe the punt unit has taken the field and they're, they're really throwing in the towel on this game. They are really, yes, they are trying to live to play another day. Every decision I've ever made in my entire life has been wrong. But uh, that ball is up. It is a deep kick. It well, I was looks waiting. as though it was a 45-yard punt. Argos with the return. Argos pick up... There's a flag on the play. As you know, the game cannot end on a flag. That is a 15-yard penalty against the Argos clipping. But the clock is at down to one, so this will be the final play of the game. So Argos at their own 10-yard line with a two-score lead. I believe there's no option yet. No, never kneel. We shall never kneel. There is no option to kneel. Run the ball right out the middle. <laughs> Terry Metcalf gets stopped. That will take two yards off. Time out. Time out. <laughs> well, you know, I'd that love to see a safety. I mean, safeties are so much fun uh, to have this, you know, this special kind of like weird two-point play show up. That will take two yards off of his stats for the game, but it's still very impressive for Terry Metcalf. And with that, the final gun goes, and it is 21 to 8. Time out, ref. I got time out. It is 21 to 8 here in Hamilton. I am vivid. With that. You know, it's uh, it, it may be uh, Brett's trademark, uh, Edward, but uh, I am livid because what was that punt? We got, where was the Hail Mary? The Hamilton Tire Cats didn't want to pray. They just threw in the towel. I'm, that was just not, that's not the way to play football. So, Norman, yes, there were, there were some very interesting... So let, let's go back down to the studio. Brett, if you want to chime in here, go ahead. But that was some very interesting play calling at two key times in that second half there by Hamilton. So, of course, the, the second and, and 30 deep in Toronto's territory were rather than go for a touchdown or attempt to get a first down, they did a quarterback sneak. And then at the end of the game... That one, that one to me really sticks out in my mind as being kind of an, an unusual versus at the end of the game, I understand they're already down by 13 points. They're, they're, they did not have an option to really get back. In. Touchdown, onside kick, touchdown. You only need a few seconds. I suppose that's true. And I think these, these fans that are here in Hamilton that are throwing all kinds of material onto the field would likely agree with you on, on that. But I gotta say, it was an exciting game. You really like to see an individual performance like that from Terry Metcalf. Brett, what did you think about the game? 
I could still cannot believe that this game ended the way that it did. Couldn't this game go on for another 20 minutes? Why do they have to end the games the way that they do? I want to see more football, and I can't wait until next week. I think this is just absolutely ridiculous, but you know what? I hate to be wrong. I picked Hamilton coming in, and I thought they had the... I thought Marler had the hot hand. But you know what? I got to get a bit more into his head today, and I'm feeling a little bit less certain about it going into next week. I really have to wonder, but... Great performances there by Greg Dubinets. I gotta give it up to our man from Chicago. He had some really key stops there. It just wasn't enough. He wasn't able to get that that support from the offense. And I gotta call out Ross Clarkson. Buddy, get your butt back on a bus, back to Ottawa. You are no longer welcome in Tiger Town. You've barely been here a week. What an outrageous performance. Hamilton, they were off to such a great start. They could have kept it going if he had held on to that 30-yard pass and not fumbled it. People talk about GOAT. My GOAT for this game, and not the greatest of all time, but the GOAT is the person we blame, is Ross Clarkson. Straight out of Simon Fraser University. I will be shocked if he is back in a Tiger Cat uniform next week. Well, thank you very much, Brett. We do have Dave Marler in the in the Hamilton locker room. There does seem to be some kind of uh, that that sobbing I'm hearing in the background. I'm not sure. They they seem a little bit upset, but but our man uh, uh, Marler is is stoic and composed, and he has agreed to speak with us. Dave, what what was what was happening in that in that second half? Well, um, you know, I can't really say. I have it on some authority. This might be apocryphal, but I do believe my coach was gambling on the spread. Uh, you know, when, when he saw that we had no chance of coming back in the fourth, he said, you know, forget putting points up on the board. Let's just, you know, go home after this. And I, I, I vehemently disagreed with that. That was pulled off and that we punted on third down with like seconds remaining. I was absolutely dumbfounded by that play. So uh, I can't explain. So that wasn't your call, right? So, no. I mean, okay. It, it, yes, it, it, I, I did find it weird that uh, your, your, your teammates were pulling you by the arms as you were quite literally kicking and screaming as they brought you off to the, off to the sidelines. Yep. It's rare to see that type of... Uh, on-field uh, conflagration between a quarterback and, and his coach. I know my mic was hot during this whole game, but that didn't go out to the viewers at home, did it? Uh, no, actually. It oh, seems as though that, that we did not pick that up at the time, but uh, I noticed it, and so that's why I wanted to bring it up now. Norman, do you have any final thoughts here? The, the way the game ended was a real head-scratcher, but overall, looking at uh, Hamilton did pose a lot of problems for Toronto. Strong special teams in the beginning. And then I, I liked how they changed their running play. They, they changed their play calling to really get a good march going in the second half. And uh, they really posed a lot of problems for the Argos. But somehow the Argos were able to uh, get the job done. So good adjustments there from Hamilton in the second half. Wasn't enough to get it done. Okay, so let's check in on our other game of the week. So we have third place Ottawa against fourth place Montreal. Both teams were tied nine to nine at the half. It was really a kicker's game that continued in the second half. Montreal was able to put up a, a fourth field goal and a rouge, whereas Ottawa had a fourth field goal. But then we had that exciting safety at the end of the third quarter that ended up being the deciding points. Ottawa defeats Montreal 14 to 13. So with that, our East Division standings, we had the Toronto Argonauts in first place with five points. In second place, we have the Ottawa Rough Riders with four points. Third place is the Hamilton Tiger Cats with three. And in last place, we have the Montreal Alouettes. Looking forward to next week. The Argos are staying on the road. 
They are going to Montreal. It's going to be Toronto at Montreal as we start the second half of this six game season. So for that, I am Edward Welch here with David Marler and Norman Knuckleberger and Brett Brannigan. Thank you for listening. We'll see you later. Next time on Third and Roll. One of the main rules in this league is you cannot run the same play twice. Ah, yes, the math in this game. You know, there's a lot. You really got to count yards. There's a lot of yard counting going on. The line judge is giving some additional scrutiny to the placement of the ball on the field. I'm wondering why, because that's supposed to be his job. Football is a lot about empathy. All it takes is a little whoopsie-daisy, and it's all turned upside down. Third and Roll is an independent Canadian football board game podcast recorded in Toronto, Ontario in 2019. Today's episode features the voices of Spencer, Alex, and Subi. This works for me. Thanks, Subi. Our cover art was illustrated by Bryce Hall. This episode was edited by Spencer Adams from Toronto. Our theme music is Magic Mountain by Jazzar. Brett Brannigan's theme is The Spellbreaker by Tritachion. Both songs used through a Creative Commons attribution license and freemusicarchive.org. Ron Booman's theme is Box Mach für Dach, performed by United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. The Pedans theme is Box Variatio in a Sank Club, performed by Kimiko Ishizaka. Todd Gray's interview music is Box Aria Variata, variation number three, performed by Brandon Kinsella. That's a lot of Bach. All Bach pieces used are in the public domain. If you'd like to help support the show, you can tell a friend or leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher you use. Or you can head on over to patreon.com slash third and roll and become a patron to get exclusive early access to new game episodes and to become a recurring character on the show. If you want to get in touch, you can find us on Twitter at third and roll or send an email to third and roll at gmail.com. New episodes every Wednesday. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on third and roll. I'm not an afterthought, Spencer, but I'll move on. We, we don't use the down marker in this game because it's really dinky and kind of hard to use. Yeah, I love the down marker. But yeah, maybe we should start using it. My, I, I just don't use the uh, the down flipper. That's not worth the it. The down it's, flipper, yeah. Because yeah. that all, yeah. Oh, well, the marker. Oh, oh, that's what you meant. The down marker, yeah, yeah. We're using it yeah. as a um, uh, distance. We're using it as the chains. Yeah, this this work, I, 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 I like moving this down. The chains are good. We're using the chains part of it, but there's a little toggle to indicate one, two, or three downs that we haven't been using. Well, every time you move it, you throw off yeah. the markers. It's not worth it.